All right, everyone, welcome back to a video. Well, not a live video anyway, which is normal scheduling for me on Forever United TV. I'm off on the jollies. Not too long before we take off, so a bit of a holiday after the madness of what was one of probably the most fractious, craziest seasons we've ever had at Manchester United. It was, it was weird, wasn't it? It was crazy. We had lows, lows, and very lows. And then to finish the season with a massive high like that, it was absolutely epic. All we can do is like just look back on that season right now. With it not being a live show, it just feels like I can just sort of like look back on what was. Uh, obviously, the channel has just started as well uh, over the last few months. So what I'll just start off by saying a massive thank you to everyone for subscribing. Make sure you do keep on subscribing. I will be doing the content while we're away. Impossible for me to do a live while I'm here right now in the slot that I usually would have. I'm happy to be abroad. Uh, flying out today and just taking it easy for a bit because it has taken it out of me this season. Like I said, it was mental. It was absolutely mental, wasn't it? And I think no one could have predicted what was happening after what happened the season before to what happened just gone now. Like the prediction table was completely wrong. United had a horrific Champions League, League Cup and uh, Premier League, but then finished with a high of Manchester City. So yeah, glad to be hitting, uh, <coughs> hitting sunnier climbs and and just putting feet up for a bit and just sort of looking back on what was just I don't know I don't even know how to describe that season and what it was it was a weird one it really was it was it was something that I've not experienced before as a whole season we've had the lows of the ollies the soul shards the poisonous the toxic dressing rooms the rumor mill and everything like that the British media going in on everything that was possibly there that was a negative some would say that we have been negative on my channel and other YouTube channels and stuff like that. It's just what it is. We're fans. We are allowed to be reactional. We are allowed to voice our frustrations, our anglers, our jubilance when things actually do go right, like it did at weekend. What you've got to remember is these are raw opinions that we give and what I give particularly on this channel. And everything that I say is just from the heart. I'll say it as I see it. I'll say it as... It happens, and yeah, some people will judge for uh, the negative ones. Some people will judge and say that we're being over the top and clinging onto the glory days for the positives. But hey, you can't stay away from it, can you? And I'm talking to the people that are not even United fans there because you love bantering us, you love giving us stick when it goes wrong, and you sort of just try and spin it when we actually do have a positive to talk about, like the FA Cup win this weekend. But hey, <clears throat> looking at what has uh, what that season was, was in the end, a little bit of hope, I thought. In terms of the way that that team played, how we all came together, I thought, you know what, not too bad, not too bad. But when it comes to the reality side of things, there is a lot that went wrong and a lot that needs to be looked at in a more serious case because, yeah, one game against City, a good game against Liverpool and a decent FA Cup run was fantastic in a season of complete negatives all the way through. But... You have to be real and honest with everything that's going on right now. Ten Hag's future is being discussed. We talked about it last night. Will he stay? Will he go? Personally, I don't think any of us are going to look at an FA Cup final and look at what the fans are saying and all the jubilant fans saying we need to back him now after what happened in one game. Reality will slowly creep in uh, and Ineos will make the decision that works for them. Like They cannot think about the fan base when it comes to the business side of Manchester United. I'm not having a go at Ten Hag in that. I'm just telling you exactly what is going to happen with Ineos. They, as a football club owner, can you realistically look right into a fan opinion and go that that's why we need to keep this manager? They need to look at what they want to do. Now, I think, and the way that things have moved around, personally, I just feel like Ten Hag is trying to position himself in the perfect place to suit what Ineos want. Now, that you have to give credit for, for Ten Hag. You have to say, look, he is now trying to adapt. He adapted for the first time, I thought, over the last few weeks in the way he set the team up. Who'd have thought that Amrabat would have been first, team on the team, first name on the team sheet come an FA Cup final with everything on the line by the end of the season? He's literally been in the side for four weeks and everyone thinks he should stay right now. Ten Hag wins a trophy and everyone thinks he should stay right now. Are we being too reactional is what I'm saying. Are we just looking at what's happened over the last couple of weeks and going, we're all right. We have got past Newcastle, we got past Brighton, we beat City in the final, three wins the end of the season, we're in Europe, everything's okay. Do we ignore what happened? Are we a reactional fan base right now? That's the question you've got to ask yourselves as United fans. And do you know what? I don't think we are. I think we're realistic in what we've watched. 
We're realistic with the injuries. I've not let injuries get uh, on top of uh, the excuse side of things. I don't think it's, I don't think it's an excuse for us. I don't. I think we've had enough players within this team available through a season to finish at least in the top four. And that would have been a progressive season for me, finishing in the Champions League. But well, Ten Hag failed in the league and he failed in the Champions League. It was a piss poor attempt in the Champions League, wasn't it? But, hey, you've got to look at what Ten Hag has done in the last week. He's won two trophies now and that will stand up. It will stand up inevitably. And do you know what? Ineos may think about that. They may look at it and go, can anyone else coming in or who's available now do better than what Ten Hag has done? And now we don't know. It's hindsight, innit? We don't know if anyone's going to do better with what tools Ten Hag had, what squad he had. Would the training have been different and my players not got injured? Ten Hag has to be held responsible for some of the injuries as well that we've had through this season because a lot of them have happened in training. Are we overtraining? What's going on there at the football club? Can you blame the club for not giving Ten Hag more staff, fitness regime? Uh, and fitness staff and everything like that, just to try and look after the players better. Because like Liverpool, sorry, not Liverpool, Arsenal and City, uh, quite clearly with the squads that they've had, have done well this season in the league because they've had most of their squads. So what are they doing? Playing more games than Manchester United. What are they doing different to what we are? Is it just bad luck for Manchester United, is what I'm saying. I don't think you can put it down to bad luck and I don't think you can put it down to not having the right players available because the only player that came back into that team against Manchester City, different to what we've had pretty much available all season, was Leicher. Is one player enough to use the injuries as an excuse? Look, Luke Shaw wasn't there and he's been moaning about that left-hand side and the stability. I thought we were fantastic without Luke Shaw. So, you know what I'm going with. You know, like, at the end of the day, look, the season is done now and we have to look forward. Looking forward, looking at the players that might stay. I mean, I've been through lists with people outside of Old Trafford. Uh, I spoke with many of people on shows and stuff like that and different podcasts with who I think should actually stay at Manchester United, who should go. When you look at it, I would say, look, Ericsson, Casemiro, Varane, we know they're going. I, 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 Ericsson and Casemiro, not as much. Uh, we don't know if they are going or not, but I would let Ericsson go. I would let Casemiro go. Uh, Varane, we know, is going. Personally, I would let Juan Bazaka and Victor Lindelof go as well. I'm just cutthroat. It's the way I am. Uh, Martial is going as well. I would get rid of Marcus Rashford. Uh, I would just do a full overhaul. I don't care who the manager is. My main priority right now is the players that are in this squad and who needs to go. I think Marcus Rashford needs to go. I think Manchester United need to invest in that area then if he goes. But if he does not go, then I don't think that... I don't think that Manchester United should be should be really invested in that area. I'm going to minute. Please help to reduce the number of security alerts by keeping your luggage with you at all times. Luggage is here. Don't worry. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> you've got the Jaden Sancho, the Mason Greenwood situation. Now Mason Greenwood has just said goodbye to Getafe, so he's coming back to Manchester because he's got no other club at the moment. Does Mason Greenwood? If we cannot sort out a club for him, come on pre-season tour with Manchester United. Does Jadon Sancho, if we cannot sort out with Dortmund after this Champions League final? And do you know what? Like I said, the Euros are in the way. Everything is in the way right now this summer. You look at it and you've got to just... Attention, please. This is a police announcement. Mm. Would you, the owner of the vehicle, registration number WN17, BJO Blue Folder Mondial. Please return your vehicle and remove it immediately. The Reggie WN17 BJO Blue Folder Mondial. Mondial. Please return to your vehicle and remove it immediately. This was a police announcement. Oh. Someone's parked in the wrong spot. <laughs> Back to where I was anyway. Sancho Greenwood. There is a distinct possibility that we are going to see Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood on a United pre-season tour if we cannot get into negotiations early enough and settle them deals out. Like that sinking like Greenwood's coming back to United. He's now going on his holidays for pre-season, just like Jaden Sancho will, both not in the England squad. United need to get onto them deals, first of all, get them sorted, get them done, because 
we need to know exactly what money we can make from that to invest back into the club. And then when you look at that, that brings Marcus Rashford into the equation because you've got to say that if Sancho and Greenwood cannot be sold, Marcus Rashford must be sold. We need to make room. What are we going to do if we cannot get rid of Sancho and Mason Greenwood? They are just going to be there and whatever manager is in place at Manchester United will probably end up having to use them players. They will have to train with the first team squad. If we want harmony and we want to move forward, we need that, we need that togetherness at Carrington. <clears throat> I don't know what the plan would be for Ineos in terms of dealing with that situation if they can't get through to him. Would they be okay in accepting them players back into the squad? Do they sit down personally? With Mason Greenwood and Jaden Sancho this summer, do they get the same treatment that the other first team players get? Do they get that one on one with Brailsford or whatever it is at Ineos? Speak to Wilcox. Do they look at it a bit differently? Do Ineos basically say, well, this isn't our problem. We're just dealing with what we've got right now and we're going to use what we've got to our advantage moving forward from this point. And that might, inv that might actually include Mason Greenwood, that might include Jaden Sancho. So, a lot of work to do for Ineos, but realistically, when you look at it, I cannot see Greenwood or Sancho move, or staying at Manchester United. I can see them both moving, and definitely if Ten Hag stays, you can say goodbye to Jaden Sancho. So are Ineos looking at that? Do they look at it, do they look at it and go, if Ten Hag goes and we bring someone else in, we might not have to get rid of Jaden Sancho. He comes back. We'll take the risk of the fan reaction to it. We'd rather deal with that than the issue behind the scenes at Carrington if Ten Hag is still in place and Sancho comes back. That's what you've got to look at. Like I said, them two on their own, top priority this summer. Get that sorted as quick as possible. Then we can move on to the first team squad. Uh, like I said, Lindelof, Juan Bezaka, they need to go because I'd rather keep Maguire in the squad than Lindelof. Uh, Johnny Evans will probably go. We need, we need quite a lot of players when you look at it. We do. We need to sell a lot. We need to buy a lot. I don't think we're going to get more than five players this summer. We need four first team players in this team. And that's the first team starting lineup for me, I feel. We need two centre backs. Uh, well, one centre back to come straight in, another centre back to cover for the likes of Evans and Lindelof, because we're losing Varane, who's the first team. Then you've got Lindelof and you've got Johnny Evans, so we need to replace them two. And then. Midfield, Casemiro, if Amrabat goes back, do we keep Amrabat now? I think Amrabat, and he's been doing a lot of talking online, social media. I, do you know what? Most people I've spoken to now, and even the taxi driver coming here, a big United fan, I'm keeping him. I said to him, I said to him in a taxi, I went, are you not just looking at this and being reactional over the last few weeks? And his, and his response was, well, could we have got this out of Amrabat early on in the season? Is it Ten Hag's fault that Amrabat hasn't been given this chance? Did he not trust him? earlier in the season. Why did he not trust him earlier in the season? He's been available for weeks. So why is he not putting him in the side? It's really interesting with Amrabat, but most people now at 20 million are probably going to say, let's trigger that. He's young enough. He's playing well at the moment. And it saves us going out, trying to find another central midfielder. Because if Ericsson goes, Casemiro goes, then all you've got is Scott McTominay, Bruno Fernandes and Kobe Mainu. Amrabat, I think, has to stay. I mean, it's Casemiro or it's Amrabat. I think they'll cash in on Casemiro and keep Amrabat. I think that's the only way that Man United can do this. But yeah, we'll see how they go about it and approach that one. So, in reality, the three key signings, the three key players that are top talking points right now, you would say Amrabat because he looks like he can be a player for us now. Now he's been given a chance in the team. Mason Greenwood, Jane Sancho, I don't think Marcus Rashford. I would say four players essential that need looking into top priority this summer uh, there's a few players that are on the peripheral interesting to see what happens with Palistra I would keep him personally and get rid of Rashford but uh, I don't think Palistra is going to stay he definitely won't stay with Ten Hag he's at the football club so the Ten Hag and managerial situation at United does actually impact what is happening with Ten Hag, um, uh, sorry, and what Ten Hag's team will be, or if another manager comes in, if that makes sense. Because if another manager comes in, the Sancho situation opens up, the Amrabat one opens up, he might say, no, I forget it, send him back on loan. I think if Ten Hag stays, Amrabat stays, T Sancho doesn't come back, Mason Greenwood doesn't come back, uh, and Marcus Rashford probably ends up staying. So we've got that. That's a, 
that's what's going to happen if Ten Hag stays, in my opinion. Obviously, get your comments in below and let me know as well what you think. But, yeah, it's, I could go on forever on a day talking about what's actually going to happen with Manchester United. But right now, I'm just looking back on a season where, ultimately, out of the four competition we were in, we failed drastically and horrendously in three and succeeded in one. Luckily for the fan base and everything about United, the one that we succeeded in was the last one of the season and we can go into this summer on a bit of a high but all I'm going to say is just look don't forget about what happened in the rest of the season look back at the games we lost look at how pathetic Manchester United were at times and why did you not perform because a lot of them players played in them games that played in that final why did you not perform in them games but you did the final why was it the big stage game that you turned up for to round it up Sancho gone Amrabat stays Greenwood gone Rashford gone Palestri back in? Hmm, we will see, won't we? We will see. But yeah, this video basically is just a massive thank you again as I set off on holiday. Uh, just to say thanks to all subscribers, the members, everyone who has been involved with the channel, all the contributors, everyone like that. You all know who you are. Uh, the guys at TFO for that platform and all the excitement that's coming with that as well. Massive thank you. We've had loads of support. We've had uh, people trying to take us down. We've had uh, the bad as long we had the bad with the good I know that for certain uh, and what's gone on behind the scenes a lot of people will never know about and it's probably the best way to keep it don't want to go on about that too much but uh, the big thing that has got this channel going where it is going is you guys the subscribers and everyone who has backed it uh, and made it what it is it isn't just me it is a community and I love the community here on FUTV and I just want to say a massive massive thank you to all you guys as well uh, that have backed me and have backed the channel, Kaz and everyone involved. It's been an absolute ball. And we go on holiday. Hopefully I'll be back live with you later on as well, guys, if we can land in time and get a video up. Uh, and you'll see where I'm at and we'll go over what's happened while I've been in the air with United. But yeah, that's it. I'm going to round it up there because I need to get probably uh, checking on the boards and see where my flight is. It's not long away now. So, guys, I'll check in with you later. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, hit the subscribe button as well. And come on, United.